death, the desired, the feared, the longed for sleep, the terror of the coming sleep, death, war, the vast slipping city doomed for the bombs, the roar of oncoming engines, the gunfire, the screams, the houses shattered, death universal, my own death, death of the seen and known and tasted and tangible world, death with its army of fears, not the unknowledged fears, the fears that are advertised, more dreadful than those, the private fears of childhood, fear of the height of the high dive, fear of the farmer's dog and the vicar's pony, fear of the cupboards, fear of the dark passage, fear of splitting your fingernail with a chisel, and behind them, most unspeakably terrible of all, the arch fear, the fear of being afraid. It can never be escaped. Never. Never. Not if you run away to the ends of earth. Not if you yell for mummy or keep a stiff upper lip or take to drink or to dope. But fear sits throned in my heart. I carry it about with me. Always. But if it is mine, if it is really within me, then... Why then? And at this moment... But how infinitely faint, how distant, like the high far glimpse of a goat truck through the mountains between the clouds. I see something else. The way that leads to safety. To where there is no fear, no loneliness, no need for J, K, L or M. For a second I glimpse it. For an instant it is even quite clear. Then the clouds shut down. And a breath of the glacier, icy with the inhuman coldness of the peaks, touches my cheeks. No, I think. I could never do it. Rather the fear I know, the loneliness I know. For to take that other way would mean that I should lose myself. I should no longer be a person. I should no longer be Christopher Isherwood. No, no. That's more terrible than the bombs. More terrible than having no lover that I can never face.